love one another, love one another, love one another. That's one of the Lord's, actually, one of the greatest commandments that God has. Remember, the first one is to love the Lord our God with all our hearts, with all our soul, with all our mind. And the second is to love our neighbor as ourselves, not as best as you can, but love him as yourself. And that is a supernatural request right there because we don't just naturally love people as ourselves. It's kind of easy maybe to do it with our children, um, but mm, not necessarily even in those cases, right? Because some people, they have challenging children. So in order to love that way, it requires us first submitting ourselves to God and allowing him to make that change in our hearts. And the way we're going to do that is when we say, Lord, teach me how to love you with all my heart, my mind, and my soul. When you learn how to do that and you give yourself to the Lord, because it's not something you can do, he will make the change and you'll be able to love people. Okay. As best as, as you know, the Lord says, as much as possible, live peaceably with all men. And because I guess the Lord knows some people, they don't want peace, right? So you do the best that you can. But the thing here is loving one another, loving each other. The reason why I'm talking to you all about this is that if we have love, if we love people the way the Lord commands us to love them, then we'll be able to love other people. We'll, we'll, be, we'll have compassion, actually. That's what I mean to say. We'll have more compassion and love and empathy in how we minister, in how we deal with people, as far as our patience, as far as our kindness, as far as our forgiveness levels. It will not, there's no way the levels can be as it is uh, currently, you know, in some organizations and churches and just life in general, if people are truly loving each other the way that Christ commands it. You know, one of the things that I will say in the areas that the Lord uses me and I realize it is in the area of the prophetic. That means I'm able to look and see people and see things and the Lord reveals it to me. It may not happen all the time, but well, it happens a lot. And I was wondering, God, how do I deal with this? The area of the prophetic is uh, the equivalent to what people will call today psychic, right? And a psychic is simply someone who has the gift of prophecy and it's just perverted, you know, but it's a gift. So what it means, how do I do this? How do I go through my life every day and I can, I get around people and I'm able to see things about them just seeing and i remember one point i wish i didn't but i remember the lord saying don't ever say that again <laughs> to wish you didn't have a gift that i've given to you and i wonder to myself lord if as a is is having the gift of the prophetic and being able to see so clearly into people how do you balance this how do you i manage this and what the lord said to me is you must have love you must have love and that's for any ministry because when you learn to have love you learn to love people the way the lord tells you to love them and me i don't like to tell people i love you i love you i think it's insane i'm not gonna just say that to you so it's not like i'm going around like i love you but it's it it's it's beyond words because we know people say that and they don't mean it. People say they love you and kick you in your in your neck tomorrow, um, but really it's a, a type of love that only comes from God. It's just really just becomes a part of your personality. It's not a matter of I love you. It's just it's a, a an attribute I can say or a, a cat a part. It just becomes a part of you that you just have it. It's just there. It's not something you got to work up and you got to act on. It's just there and it will manifest itself when things arise, when you're offended, when things occur, it will just be there. That's the best way I can look at it. So we have to have love. So even with the gift of, of the prophetic, the way you do that is that you must love everyone you come in contact with. You must have an attitude of love. You must have the love of God in you, deeply ingrained and rooted in you.
How do you be an effective leader and pastor in the church is that you have the love of God in you so you can treat the people the way that you're supposed to treat them and deal with them the way that you're supposed to deal with them. Eat and have the patience that you need to have. How can you be a, a, a mother, a parent that is, you know, effective is that you must have the love of Christ in you so you can give that to your children. You must have that love in you so you're able to give that to people who don't deserve it. And love does not mean you're stupid. Love does not mean you are a uh, you are uh, a doormat. It's just something that you must have the love of Christ, not what you say out of your mouth. And that leaves the minute someone makes you mad, but love, love so you can forgive, love that you can have empathy, love that you'll have patience, love that you will be able to serve and to give. That's the type of love that is going to take your ministry where it needs to go, not just you, because you cannot do it on your own. So that is what the Lord showed me in, in my gift, the, the gift in that is front and center with me, the gift of prophecy, to be able to see things about a person, see stuff that's going on in their life, that no matter what I see, no matter what the Lord may reveal, no matter what the Lord may give me to say to these individuals or this person, that I can, that because I have the love of God in me, that I can never bring myself to exalt myself over this person or use it against them, or I don't want to talk to them and I want to avoid them because of something that the Lord has allowed me to see through my gift. Do you understand that? So no matter what, no matter what your gift is, no matter what your calling is, you must have God's love and you are going to be tested in that through your personal life. In my personal life, I've had things that has happened to me. I've been hurt before. I have been just things that has happened and the Lord had me to do things front and center. I had to deal with these things head on. I had to forgive. The Lord gave me people to pray for that I knew was talking about me and doing things wrong to me. People who have hurt me. The Lord is like, okay, this has happened. This piece of mail has come in. I need you to, you got to contact this person, let them know, hey, this has come in. What are you going to do with this mail? You're going to throw it in the garbage? You're going to do whatever? Their stuff came to your house by accident. This, what are you going to do? God will tell you, hey, I need you to go back to this place. I need you to get around these individuals. God may send you back to face things. God may bring you in a position where you have to ask someone to forgive or forgive someone even if they didn't ask you for it. Believe me, God will take you through all those steps. But the first thing is he's going to show you how to give love when you don't, when people don't deserve it. And he'll teach you how to forgive. And I always say this. God has taught me how to forgive, but it doesn't mean I stay around you. I can forgive you, but it doesn't mean you get access. Because while you've done the right thing, that person, unless they are just completely like, Lord, I'm sorry, and break down. A lot of times, people like that, they'll think that you are saying you're, you're asking forgiveness or you're forgiving them because you feel like you're wrong. And they'll just keep that they never change who they are. So they're still toxic. They're still caustic. They are still draining. They are unchanged. But that doesn't mean they get full access to you because God knows if you keep a person that keeps hurting you and doing things to you all the time, it's going to affect you. And God needs you to be a clear and open path and can do it for him to do his work in you. But you're going to have to learn to love though. You're going to have to learn to forgive. And when you forgive, when you say it out of your mouth, you say what you're saying for asking, you're giving forgiveness for, or you're asking forgiveness for. And now you go to God and say, Lord, I've taken that step of faith. Now I need you to help me. So I really can feel that in my heart. Take this pain out of me and stay before him and he will do it. And ask the Lord all the time to show you how to love. How many people is praying, are praying and asking God for unconditional love, to love your neighbors, to be able to love your enemies, to know how to balance it out. 
Once you learn those things, because your test is going to be in your personal life, how you're acting outside all the walls of the church, how you're acting behind closed doors with your family, how you act on the job, how you act in traffic, how you act in a long line at the bank. Those are the things that's going to test your capacity of love and enable you to be able to be effective in your ministry. So no matter what your ministry is, you must have love as the foundation to be effective. All right, guys. Bye.